Just ahead on Crossroads, meet a man who is using his personal story of addiction to change lives and spread hope in Grant County. We'll catch up with Michael Halstead for an update on downtown Marion's old bank building. We get into the fall spirit with a different kind of decoration. And see a 200 year old story and its timeless lessons brought to the stage right here in Marion. It's all next on Crossroads. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Crossroads. I'm Randall King. And I'm Annika Peterson. And I feel like I haven't been here forever. You really haven't. <laughs> We've done a lot of productions without you. How does it feel to be back? Feels like you don't need me. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's not true. <laughs> well, I was watching the replay of Mrs. Cinema 1812, and you were there with Jess Voss yeah. and did a fine job. I was just missing out. I was out of town. Yeah. And that's a fun event, wasn't it? Was it was really fun. I've gone to a lot of similar events in my past, but this was a really unique experience, and it was really cool how a small community really came together in a large way. So. I saw you standing next to one of the craftsmen with yeah, some, that a lot was of open fire and smoke. Just yeah, trying to good. breathe the whole time. <laughs> well, it's a fabulous tradition, and we did it on the first season of Crossroads, and now we've done it on the last season of Crossroads, yeah. so you guys handled it well. And this is kind of a season of reflection for us, and I've been thinking about all the things Crossroads Roads has meant over the past 15 years and I think a lot of it has been people people who uh, make a difference or change the other people's lives and you've been able to see some of that too yeah I think Crossroads is an appropriate name for us just because we're always talking about how people's lives intersect and how they affect each other and can really produce a big change and I actually recently had the opportunity to meet a local Marion resident who's been through some ups and downs in his life and it's been able to help him not only come out on the other side, but also help others as well in that. And now he's going, like he's using his story to help others just like him to rewrite theirs. There's beauty and hope, even in the least likely of places. But finding that hope is what sets Shane Beal apart from the rest. It's almost his fourth year sober, and he's sharing what he's learned from his own journey of recovery with anyone in the community willing to listen. I have a lived experience not only of, of addiction, but also incarceration, uh, of starting over, uh, of losing everything and having to completely rebuild my life. And so with my own lived experience, I can understand and appreciate at least people's stories from, from what they've lost and what they're trying to get back. And so that's my personal goal is to basically help people walk that journey of recovery and show them what it looks like, what it feels like, um, the ups, the downs, and then just kind of be with people in that journey. Hope is contagious, which is why Shane recently helped found Hope House, a nonprofit that offers transitional living for men and women in recovery. He also volunteers weekly at Grant County Rescue Mission, making a lasting impact on mission residents like Michael Wood. Shane is a big reason I came here. Um, I've been gone 30 years, but coming back, um, I would say he is definitely a pillar of the community, especially when it comes to recovery. All the things he does. I mean, he doesn't just do things, he actually lives it. He's an example of, for people like me, especially with all the degrees and success, to fall and then to know that I can get out of that. Uh, Shane's is definitely a go-getter. Uh, I think Shane believes in uh, community and believes in change. Uh, once we started the Life Change program here at the Grant County Rescue Mission, Shane was uh, a big part of getting involved, wanting to teach classes, and largely in part because he not only believes in recovery, but he believes in community. Shane spreads his hope, and at local events like Voices of Recovery, the community has responded with overwhelming support. There is so much outreach here in Grant County. These guys are leading the pack. It's the work of people like Shane Beal that reminds us we are never alone in our struggles. Even in the darkest times, we are always stronger together. I think that's such a great example of things we've done through the years on Crossroads. When you met Shane, you met someone who's been touched and now he's using that to help others. Yeah, he was just one of the few in that group who who use their own personal experiences to really speak into other people's lives. And that was, that was really what stood out to me, just his hope that he could spread. Kind of what this show and what Grand County is all about. Yeah, yeah really. Uh, well, don't go anywhere because when we get back, it's time for a little downtown update. Yeah, we'll catch up with architect Michael Halstead and talk about the latest developments to that old bank building. You wouldn't know it anymore.
Well, welcome back to Crossroads. We're on location in downtown Marion with our friend Mike Halstead of Halstead Architects and the old Marion National Bank building. But one of the things that's changed that we want to update, Mike, is this has gotten a new name. Yes, yeah, it's uh, Ridley Tower. And uh, I closed on the purchase of the building in August of 2018. And my granddaughter Ridley was born two weeks before that. So I decided to name the building after her. Well, that's, now you know the story. Well, what we wanted to do is give people an update on where this stands. The last time we were here with Crossroads, we went all over the place. We talked about the lobby. We talked about the apartments upstairs. Let's start down here. What are we going to see here? Because obviously you're finishing some painting up here and yes. you've got an opening coming. Yes, uh, Thanksgiving, we want to have Tucker Realtors space open. And they have the space at the west end of the main lobby they wrap around the teller station. Uh, we're also planning on having this lobby space open uh, Thanksgiving. So starting the first of the year, we could rent this space out for weddings or conferences or seminars or special meetings. We'll All the that. arches and stuff like that. I could yes. just see some weddings already getting yeah, scheduled. Yeah, we've already had a couple people call about weddings, but uh, until the building has a sprinkler system in, we can't, uh, can't occupy uh, uh, the building with this many people. And uh, so the key is getting Tucker in. Uh, they move in the weekend of Thanksgiving. Uh, the lobby space will be ready. And then the next big step is uh, Obie's Barbecue. That was which, part of the community uh, pitch night community that was pitch Grant night. County Economic yeah. Growth Council. You don't have to get into the process of how that went, but was that a surprise to get a tenant like that that's gonna come here? Well, it was a big surprise, number one, the number of applicants we had. So we had over 20 applicants mm. who were interested. Uh, it was really difficult to shortlist to five, and then it was even harder for the judges to pick from the three who presented that Saturday night and select just one winner. Uh, but uh, Obie's Barbecue kind of stood out, and uh, they are going to occupy, there's actually two buildings here. There's a seven-story tower, and then there's an adjoining building uh, that is a one-story building that's also historic. It was actually built before Ridley Tower, and we have pictures of Ridley Tower in construction with that building already there. Sometime right after World War II, the bank bought it, created an opening between the two. Uh, but Obie's Barbecue is going to take up that entire first floor space. They'll have outdoor seating along Washington Street and the courtyard, which we mm. share with uh, Boston Hill. And they'll have dining. They're also going to have a microbrewery. Uh, and obviously their barbecue, they were here for pitch night. With I was going to say, and, for me and a lot of other people, uh, you have me at barbecue, but <laughs> when you put that into downtown, what a nice asset to add. We talked a lot in the last time we did a story about kind of third floor up apartments. That's a little slower than maybe you would like, but you're, you're putting some pieces together for that. Yeah, the, the difficult part with the apartments is that we want them to be affordable, but market rate. Uh, so we want them to be market uh, workforce housing that uh, nurses and firemen and policemen and teachers can afford to live in. So the rents will go from about $950 to $1,600, depending on where you are, whether it's a one bedroom, two bedroom, or three bedroom. So we're trying to keep it in that affordability range where you know, a couple of young people or a couple of students or a couple of professors could afford to live there. Uh, so the difficult part is in Marion, Indiana, this project, if it's a seven and a half million dollar project, after it's complete, it won't sell, for, it would not sell for that. It might sell for four and a half million because the value is the rental income from the commercial spaces and the apartments. And because you get less rent in Marion that you would for those spaces than you would in Indianapolis or Chicago or Fort Wayne, you can't sell the building for more than what a mortgage will uh, maintain with the with the rents. So the, that's the big problem is that delta between what it costs to restore it and what it's worth when you're done. Well, you're going to live with it for two or three more years. You told me also last time that you fell in love with the building. Still yes. having fun? Well, yeah, I'm still having fun. I, I wake up in cold sweats occasionally. <laughs> uh, that's with any project, about, yeah. I'm sure. But uh, yeah, it's still a challenge. It's, you know, it's, it uh, wakes me up every day and gets me going. And it's, it's a great project. And if we can get the commercial spaces full, then I think the banks and the lenders will look uh, more kindly upon taking the risk for the apartments. Well, so that's the real challenge right now. Is it's to the, get the centerpiece, I think, right yeah. now of a lot of exciting things happening downtown. And thank you for taking it on and waking up in cold sweats and <laughs> yeah. being willing because I think all of us are going to benefit. We just got to be patient, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Michael Halstead here in the new or emerging Ridley Tower. Well, when we come back, speaking of emerging, what's it like to paint those rocks that people go looking for? Monica and I will give it a try. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back to Crossroads. We all know fall is famous for changing leaves and pumpkin carving, but Alexis Beal is here to show us just a way to get into the fall spirit with some rock painting. So yeah. and what Alexis, is this all about? I understand you're gonna make us paint. I am, okay. I am, I'm sorry. Andy. Producer <laughs> error, <laughs> producer <laughs> mistake at making us do something, but you're, you're gonna tell us rock painting is something that anyone can do, right? Oh, anybody, yeah, uh, I've definitely. heard that before. <laughs> but okay, so while Annika and I get going here, why don't you tell me how, what, what we should do and then tell me how you got into this. Um, I was at the hospital one day and going down, heading down the cafeteria with a family member and um, found one of the painted rocks and it really just brightened my day and I wanted to kind of pass on that joy to, to other people. Mm, okay. Now so, I want to start out, should we just start out? Yeah, should I just, copy one Yeah, of what copy, we're going to yeah. do is That's we're going to paint idea. the um, this little Halloween cake. Oh, you want us to okay. do something very specific. Yeah, okay. I well, need that. If, if you want to, <laughs> yeah. so, so you can. So hold this so we can okay. see it. So this is so we can see the before. Oh, there we go. And then when Annika and I try to do the after. <laughs> Our poor attempts to imitate. Okay, so I need black to start out with the cat. So start yep. with what's easy. Okay. I'm doing it upside down. How long have down. you been doing this? About three years. Wow. And what got you started? It was, let's say, when I, when I found the, the rock there at the hospital, I just, I just wanted to spread joy. I wanted to, to kind of, I love to make people smile. And we should point out somewhere in here that you're part of the club that hides these things everywhere, right? I, I am. I'm Grant County Rocks. When I looked on the bottom of the rock at the hospital, it had a little keep or hide, but post on Facebook. Mm -hmm. on the back and you know please post the Grant County Rocks. So I went to the website and I looked and I, I just loved what they were doing. It was amazing. All and the people different. have loved finding these too. Oh they do. Until Annika and I add ours. No. That I, will I, kill the club. No. <laughs> so you guys are going to do great. Okay so I've got sort of a, a sort of a cat going here and I started with the tree you start with the tree I should have yeah. started with the tree but I thought I'd start with the hardest thing okay should I just do some some ears here yeah, if you could do some ears let's say that when um I, I chose this design just because I mean as you can see some of my other ones I can get pretty intricate and detailing and stuff but this one is, didn't take me too awful long and it was a nice little Halloween cat so. you pick up a different brush for the different colors or should I wash no it you can wash it out right. and if you want to use a different brush you can you can be you can use them you can smack it on the bottom okay. there a little bit because okay. boy this brings me back to things that I was never good at in school <laughs> Now, in the background, I went ahead and did the background ahead of time for you guys, just because you'd Thank be dealing you. with wet, wet paint. <laughs> I have got um, eyes here. I, I, want, I want you to know I've got eyes on my cat. Just a tree. <laughs> the fact that the cat looks like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, um, well, it's a deformed it's cat. No, no, no. no. It's something like do you awesome. draw the designs? Do you draw them first before you actually paint it on the rock? Or? Sometimes I do. Okay. I, I, was, I thought about um, this one actually last night when I was painting it. I tried to do the tr tracing on the first and I got irritated and erased it all mm -hmm. and just freehanded it. Mm. I say, but a lot of them, I do go ahead and try to, you know, the, these ones over here, I probably, yeah, I definitely stenciled the wolf and the different ones. And then the, the background, like I said, it's just blending on the backgrounds. I used a slate blue and a, a navy blue on the background to kind of. Oh. Did looks I do a this? I did the pencil neck. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of impressing myself you, here. You, you got this. I know people want to see this. Um, <laughs> You're just starting with the cat. This is the big cat. <laughs> if I just get the cat done in, the, that's in this a good segment, idea. that's, that's, I a, think that's I lost a treat. The eyes. Yeah. <laughs> now, and I, I'll show you a trick with the eyes. I cheat with my circles. Okay. I, have, I have all kinds of tools. I've been, like I said, I've been doing this for about three years now, so yeah. I've kind of gotten into, I, I've, put, I've put more than I should in it, then I'll tell my husband. So, <laughs> but um, you can use these dotting tools. Oh, okay. And they make the little perfect circles in there. You did pretty good on your eyes, though, even without the tools. Wow. So he's a natural. Yeah. Yeah, a natural but, loser. But yeah, you can use that. And <laughs> wow. You just dip it, kind of dip it down in the paint. Okay. And it'll make. Oh. I can do it on there. It'll make little perfect circles. Well, I need that. Oh. Les asked the big question: If someone oh, no. else wants to hide rocks, how do we join Grant County Rocks or? Uh, just right on the back, paint a rock, hide it uh, right on the back, 
post a rehide and post the Grant County Facebook and uh, Grant County Rocks on Facebook. And where do people go if they want to find rocks? Are you Everywhere. still doing a lot on the Greenway? or There's there's usually quite a bit on the Greenway. Um, Matter Park, Gas City Park has been a pretty big hot spot for a lot of the rocks. Um, Beaner Park, right? Beaner. Yeah, Man, yeah. Everybody I, just calls it Gas City. Yeah, I, I've lived there all my life, so it's, it's just Gas City Park. But Okay, yeah, Alexis Beal, this is as far as I'm going to get. But I'm I, proud. I'm, I'm proud going to at least write us. crossroads on there so someone in Grant County is going to find this and say, I remember when cross. Oh, I like your tree. So we take your yeah, tree and yeah, my, and my lame cat. <laughs> Photoshop them together. We might have yeah. something. Alexis, thank you so much. Oh, and and Grant County here. Rocks is a lot of fun. It, was, it really We found is. out about it a couple of years ago and found out Alexis was connected to it. But I just think it's a fun thing. It and it's really nice is, that yeah. it's not virtual. It's something you're not doing with your phones. Right, you can and, take and pictures. it's all over the United States. That's I it. mean, there's rock sites on just about in just about every county and in the whole country. Well, thanks for coming in and being willing to put up with us. This oh, is, it's this my is what she does. You can see them on camera right now. They are beautiful. Well, thank you, Alexis, for coming by. And we're gonna make sure to check out and hide these rocks so make sure to be <laughs> on the lookout for hide them really well yeah so start <laughs> looking so for our cats <laughs> thank you guys right. for having thank me thank you so much my pleasure when thank we you. come back we're going to go behind the scenes of pride and prejudice to see how the iwu theater guild is bringing the 1813 novel to life stay with us And welcome back to Crossroads. You know, Annika, you were doing Mississippi 1812 last show, and then we were talking about some of the different changes. You're getting a full taste of what Grant County is all about, history and commitment to the arts. Yeah, I'm learning local history. I'm learning Indiana history. I grew up in Georgia, so I never actually took Indiana history. And it's really interesting just to see actually how much went on in the state and in this local area. It was what makes the, 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 the county kind of fun to be a part of with the universities and everything and some of our arts communities. You have celebrations of history that also come on stage. And, you know, one year after that War of 1812 that you got to celebrate, Jane Austen published a novel called Pride and Prejudice. Well, our producer, Russ Clark, found that despite that story being set over 200 years ago, its lessons and wisdom are ageless. Life sure has changed a lot since Jane Austen's classic novel, Pride and Prejudice, was written in 1813. But for these Indiana Wesleyan Theater Guild performers, in their teens and early 20s, they are still finding plenty to relate to in these 200-year-old characters. It helps when you've grown up reading the novel or watching one of its many adaptations to film. So for the actresses handling the lead roles, it's felt like a production they've spent their whole lives preparing for. For me, these are characters that I've always kind of known in a weird way. So yeah, it was really exciting and, and fun to kind of actually get to portray it myself. Yeah, I think it was more of like a finally yeah. moment. Cause yeah, you just grow up reading this book over and over and over and over. Um, so in some ways it's almost easier to do something like this because it almost seems more familiar than doing something today, yeah. like modern. But the story's familiarity doesn't really alleviate the many challenges that come with bringing the story to the stage. So there, we've had several challenges. One is the novel was made into a movie series that's five hours. Our play is two hours. So there's a lot that isn't in it. And so we try as uh, storytellers to tell the whole story as completely as we can in terms of uh, this character journey. Um, the other two challenges that I've been fortunate to have two seniors uh, work with me was uh, we w did some choreography and some movement for period pieces of dancing and then accents. Um, so we have the actors performing in a British Very accent. Much prove your eldest, Jane, indeed. The setting and time period can make life harder behind the scenes, especially for first-time designers Kylie Adams and Kayla Fozzi. Yeah, so we're trying to do as much as we can to have the uh, it be as time period as we can. We've learned a lot <laughs> in, the, in such a short amount of time, like where we initially started with so little experience, and now here we are. <laughs> and helping these 19-year-olds bring the 19th century to life behind the scenes is technical director Dr. Steve Woods, assisting the designers with sets and costumes, but also helping these students tackle the questions Jane Austen 
raises with her work. It's been great working with the young women in the program because they have lots of questions about agency and roles. So it's been good discussions about that, relationships, and what kind of woman would you be in this world if you lived in this world. It's a, it's a really accessible play, even though it's a dated story. Uh, and I think that audiences still gravitate to Jane Austen's work because she asks a lot of interesting questions that seem as if she's asking them now. I never met with so many pleasant girls in one evening in my life, and several uncommonly pretty. This story still resonates with audiences today all over the world. And with three sold out shows so far, there seems to be plenty of people ready to challenge themselves and take on the questions we've been asking ourselves for over two centuries. For Crossroads, I'm Russ Clark. That was amazing just how they already sold out three of their shows. It's just, you can tell the support for the Jane Austen novels. I read Jane Austen when I was like just a couple years ago and I want to see this. It'll be really cool. There's a cool. couple of people in my household that want to see that as well. Isn't it interesting how someone who wrote so long ago still has relevance today? Yeah. And, and, and to see our students at Indiana Wesleyan University bring that to life and be able to kind of get into that old English mm -hmm. way of thinking, that's pretty cool. Well, if you want to catch a show, you can do so on October 31st at 7.30 p.m. That's when it starts at the Black Box Theater. Shows for November 1st and 2nd are already sold out, as we said. November 7th and 9th at 7.30 p.m. The final show is then on November 10th. That's a Sunday matinee at 2 p.m. And as always, you can just check with the Philippi box office on the Indiana Wesleyan campus. Call them for those schedules. The IW Theater Guild also available on the web and on social media. Just to get that schedule straight in your head, don't miss great local productions. I agree. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you do. You should go. As always, we want to hear from you. If you have ideas or stories or want to comment on something you've seen here on Crossroads, why don't you email us at crossroads at endwest.edu, crossroads, I-N-D-W-E-S dot E-D-U, or drop us a note or a postcard, WIWU TV, 4201 South Washington Street, Marion, Indiana, 46953. The best place to keep up with all our videos from Crossroads and WIWU TV is on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash WIWU TV and become a subscriber. You'll get updates whenever anything new comes out and that's available on your mobile devices, computers and smart TVs. And while you're online, check out our Facebook and Twitter pages. That's where you get a behind the scenes look at what we're doing. Facebook.com slash WIWU TV and follow us on Twitter at WIWU TV and Annika. We alluded to it earlier in the show. I think most of the public knows this is the last season of Crossroads, but I'm kind of looking ahead. We've still got some exciting events, some great stories to tell, and yeah. I think some more painting for you to yeah. do. <laughs> I'm honored actually just to be a part of this last season. It's yeah. just really been fun. Even though yeah. we painted your face a few shows yeah, ago. Yeah, still getting over that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were a good prop, but then you contributed. You showed your own yeah. painting talent today. But we, we've got the walkway of lights opening, folks. We've got more fall events, and we've got a great season and show, concluding show plan, final show for you. So stay tuned throughout the semester and throughout this year through December. Uh, we've got some great things planned for you. Meanwhile, for everyone who's worked on this one, I'm Randall King. And I'm Annika Peterson. The crossroads of life bring people together, and that's what we try to do here each week. And we do thank you for watching, everyone. So long.